Good evening, chat. Welcome to our good Christian stream. I would like to thank all of you for showing up for tonight's service. Uh, please, uh, feel free in the chat to confess your sins as the stream goes on, uh, for I'm here to listen. Nice thumbnail, Father Otator. Thank you. It is great to hear. We are going to play Faith again tonight. I have faith in the Lord that he will deliver us a good stream. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll exercise some demons, uh, as, as you should. Now, I, I have a few, I have a few ground rules for the stream tonight. Um, we're gonna keep this a nice Christian stream, okay? I, I will do my best to also you know, keep the faith. Yeah, as they say. Uh, so, you know, we will refrain from profanity, vulgarness, uh, blasphemies. We will have none of that tonight. Hold on, I have to... There we go. Now I'm going to adjust myself, because now we're going to be in faith mode, right? So, bam, I'm johnning my ward. You know what I mean? So, I, I would like to just request to everyone, please. <laughs> please, uh, please abstain from sin tonight. Or we will get the good Christian boy achievement, and by doing so, we will be good Christian boys. I have to raise the volume for the game because I lowered it a lot when I was playing by myself because uh, I've been working on getting all the achievements in this game. I am missing two of them. So. I can't remember what I had the volume at the last time I played. So I think... I think 50... No, I think I was at 69 the, uh, the last time I played. However, that is a vulgar number. So, uh, I'm going to leave it at 65. And I can just lower my own volume. So, please tell me if the game is too quiet or too loud. So, if you have not seen the achievements for this game, or you're not familiar with what the achievements are, I said I have two achievements left to get in this game. Uh, the first is to is lore master, which is just get all the notes in all three games. So I'm missing four notes in chapter three. The other achievement, which I'm attempting tonight, and really I'm not so much attempting it as much as I'm practicing because I know I'm not going to get it. And it's just not going to happen. But it's good to get some practice, and it's called Good Christian Boy. We need to play marathon mode. You have to play through all three chapters in one session. No saving. It Technically, it saves, right? However, for all intents and purposes, it doesn't save. Because Good Christian Boy has two other requirements. Not only do you have to beat the game on marathon mode, you have to get every true ending or every good ending. And you can't die once. It is the ultimate test of faith. For we will need actual divine intervention to make it through <laughs> marathon mode so please keep me in your prayers chat uh and again tonight is the night of uh redemption right i would see why is the actual game why is the actual game so so quiet compared to the menu Let's bump it up to like 70, to 72, right? I like that number. Watch as Michael destroys this pastor, not even 30 seconds in. It is a, a very likely scenario. Uh, 
that out. I'm hoping I can at least make it through uh, chapter one unscathed. Because uh, I think it's the one I... I was a guy a little scared. Michael's a little bit of a demon. Well, no, he's not a demon. He is a poor soul possessed and ravaged by a demon, both spiritually and physically, and we must save him. Except uh, the good thing in this game, it is impossible to save Michael, unfortunately. You gotta be really careful, right? Because <laughs> when you go to leave, I've seen runs where uh, people don't don't use the cross <laughs> on Michael fast enough. It's really unfortunate because it's it's such an early way to die. You gotta be like careful because you know he can come from the edge of the screen as you're leaving. And uh, that can just kill you. Because you won't even see it coming. Okay, but we, we kind of avoided him. So that's good. But you can, you can make it through chapter one fairly quickly if you know what you're doing. Which is pretty cool. That's actually kind of like a theme for all of the games. I'm really mostly spooked about um, chapter two. There's a few moments where uh, I'm die. Also, it's the, the the father, Father Garcia, making sure he doesn't die, because then that lock you out of the good ending for chapter two. He's here. Yeah, I really just kind of focus. So, if I be quiet, uh, please forgive me, because uh, that just means I'm focusing on the game. Earlier today, I... Was that today or yesterday? I don't know. It all bleeds together. But, um... We didn't do the thing where she surrounds you. Uh... I think it was last night. I got through chapter one two times because I missed a note and got locked out of getting all the notes. So I had to I had to play through the chapter twice. And I got pretty good at the boss fight against Amy. So I'm hoping that I can I can do better. I can do well. My god, what happened to you? Do you think my face, my face is pretty? I have to finish what I started. Also, can I say that the background image that I unlocked, this picture of um, of, of John is really cool. Also, uh, I have a meme I want to show you guys real quick. Uh, because it, it's literally the scene, but it's it's a funny. Let me let me grab that real quick, right while it's relevant. Almost picked the wrong folder. There we go. My God, that. what happened to you? Oh, that's good. Yeah. Well. <laughs> so wait, we can't let that happen, right? No mortis. But uh. You know, Amy's just doing the ah, eto, yeah. You know, she just got a little goofy, a little silly, a little whimsical. Sometimes I stand there and it's like the shadow person 
uh, is slow enough where I don't even have to move. This is actually taking longer than it usually does, it feels like. Gotta kill the shadows before they scan your data. Oh my god, are you, are you uh, rendering your summertime? God, I, I can't have my, my, my data scanned. Okay, now, here's uh, the real test of uh, the personality, right? If you got scanned, right, and your your shadow got hacked to, to not want to kill you, uh, would you be homies with your shadow? Or would you hate each other? Oh, whoa, that was really close. I forgot which direction I was supposed to walk. Just don't be a fucked up uh, Shinto priest. But whatever you do, he is a real messed up dude. God! Don't worry, I said God, not God. Because I would not use the Lord's name in vain. We have to, we have to quit. We have to start over. I wish there was like an option. Uh, when you start marathon mode, to just have it like automatically quit when you die for people who are trying the achievement. That's like my one complaint. Well, actually, no, it's not my one complaint. But it is like the easiest to fix complaint I have about trying to get the achievement. My only other complaint is. Uh final boss of chapter 3 is so RNG reliant that I'm like, man, how do you expect anyone to do this? <laughs> Me and my shadow would share a brain cell and we would be very bothersome. It's true, I do know nothing. They call me Jon Snow. Or I know nothing. That's the body of you know nothing. Who is that fool? Where's the shed? Oh my god. I know if I find the pond close to the shed. Maybe I need to go another screen over. Ah, uh, eto. Oh. Yo, okay, bro. Oh, there we go. Shed. What the Michael Roa Valdem job? What? <laughs> I don't think that's his name. His name is Michael Davies. Davies? I don't know. Is he saying flock or is he saying like a no no word? You know. Demons are quite vulgar. They say a lot of swear words. Because their mission in life is to offend. Blaspheme. We can try this again. It's a good thing chapter one is like fairly short. It's not like the end of the world if you make it to the end and, and lose, but. You know, the goal is to, to not be such a pleb gamer where you, you die on the first chapter, you know? You, you, you gotta at least make it to chapter two, right? 
Hey, this is a cool little thing. Oh, very spooky, isn't it? So, I had a little uh, gamer, um, in, I guess impulse buy, I would say. Uh, I bought a USB, like Atari style joystick, four direction joystick. Um, Unfortunately, it's not a single button controller. It has like four buttons, I think. It's like two on the top and then like two on the on the front. But I really wanted to try playing this game with an Atari-style controller because it just seems like it'd be fun. It's just kind of funny because. I don't really play like Atari or Commodore style games a lot where it's like it'd really be necessary, but and I think it'd just be kind of I can't wait to play combat, right? Emulate combat for the Atari 2600. The real thing is, uh, you know, you get a uh, one of the like knob controllers to play uh breakout. Those, those control so well. But like the analog control on those is really fragile and that like they don't last long unless you take really good care of them. But I think even like normal gameplay can kind of break them. I impulse bought a PS2 catalog. Did it have God Hand? in it or something? Or like, Nocturne? My god, what happened to you? Do you think my face is pretty? I have to finish what I started. She's my priest! I like how you can hear two voices. Like, there's... the... the... one voice that's definitely in the forefront. But you can kind of hear like a whispering female voice underneath. It's a very cool effect. And it's like all text to speech or, you know, computerized voices. Digital. I, I don't. Please give me strength. Don't worry, that wasn't using the name in vain. I was, uh, I was, I was praying for his help. Oh, that was very close. She just keeps coming from the same direction. Uh, makes it very easy to deal with. Yeah. That wasn't the same direction, but it was still vertical. Get some good RNG in. That's always a plus when trying to do this. We did it, chat. That's that's the hard part of chapter one over. Now we just have to make sure we shoot Michael. <laughs> oh my god. I've usually done that like faster. I can usually do it before she even 
uh, it goes to the top left the second time and shoots the shadow person out. But I can also, like, do the first phase before she even like, gets the second shadow person out. So I don't know if marathon mode has some kind of, like, extra difficulty or something, or if it's just the positioning's wrong. I'm not entirely... I don't think marathon mode adds any difficulty or more health to enemies. Um, I'm not sure what that difference is. It might just be where I'm positioned and how fast I do things. Chapter one completed. I will say of my lord, he is my <laughs> Led, kiddo. And my fortress. It's very unfortunate my that we had to do that. I, will trust. I shall not be afraid of the terror in the night, nor of the evil that walketh in darkness. Because I have made the Lord my refuge. Listen, have you have to listen to John here, he's speaking, will he deliver me. speaking facts. I shall call upon him and he will answer me. He will be with me in trouble. He will deliver me and honor me. I really like the, uh, I can't the ending music what at for chapter house. one. I think I chapter two also uses it, but I don't remember. I It's also kind of kind of funny to me that marathon mode doesn't include the chapter two prologue, but I think that's because it was more of like a demo than like supposed to be canon to the story. Not that I really mind too much because uh, the prologue is kind of short and repetitive in a way because it has a lot of the same locations and monsters and stuff like that oh and animations as chapter 2 proper I think probably the worst part of this is having to see all these cutscenes repetitively. The origin of the Chupacabra. He took the photo too. It's kind of funny just using an Xbox controller. Dios mio, what have you done? I have the body of a pig! You can't hide from God, evil. You shall drink the wrath of the Almighty. You will drink of the wine of the wrath of God. He really couldn't eat an eye. Isn't that like, what would the texture be like? It would be like caviar? A weird line of thought. I, I don't want to know. Well, people eat like fish eyes, right? Apparently it's a delicacy in some places of the world. I've had fish eye before, very gummy. Oh, see, there we go. Chin fish eye. Um, I think, on one hand, it's like, it's very, uh, I don't know how to put it. Um, I'm totally behind not wasting any of the animal 
you're going to eat it, right? Um, I think you should definitely use as much of the animal as you can. Because otherwise, you know, to me it's disrespectful to, uh, to the life that you had to end to eat that food. Even if, like, I mean, obviously you go to the store, right, and you buy, like, say, a fish filet or some ground of beef or something. Like, obviously, you personally, you're not using all the animal, but, like, it's my hope that the whole animal gets put to use in some way. So, I don't know if I could ever see myself eating fish eye. I would certainly try it. But I think uh, if people like it and they want to eat it, uh, that's definitely a good thing to me. Anyway, uh, this is one of the harder bosses for me in Chapter 2, so I'm going to try to get it out of the way. Yeah, at the very least, I try to finish what I'm given. Yeah, I don't like the idea of wasting food, so um, if I... If I can eat it all, I will try, or I'll try to save it for leftovers. If there's further reason why I can't save it for leftovers, then, you know, I'll try to see if someone else wants it. I'll, like, I'll very begrudgingly throw out food. Like, usually the only time I'll throw it out is, like, again, if nobody, like, wants it. If it is like dirt, like inedible, or it's just carbon, uh, or if I've uh, you know like reheated it already, like I made it and then I reheated it, like I'm not gonna put it away again and then reheat it again because like that's just like the food kind of just becomes no good after like the second time you reheat it. When I do cook food, I try to cook it in a way so that I at least have enough to eat and then I can put away and reheat later and then I'll, that'll be enough for a meal in itself. It's like, was it left, up, right, left? Or was it? Oh, it's right, up, left, up. Okay. Got it backwards. Up. I'm kind of sleepy, which is weird because I had a lot of caffeine today. <laughs> I had um a Red Bull earlier in the day, and then uh, I was playing some some Call of Duty Warzone. You know the the, the DMZ mode. And I had like two cups of coffee while I was playing that. I can't get rid of that coffee bell. No matter where I am, I will say coffee like coffee. Like. I just have to be careful. I don't know if that demon will move, like, directly, vertically, or horizontally. But I definitely don't want to try, try to find out. That's funny, too, because I've never really had too much of an accent. Like, I've had people tell me, oh, you, you don't sound like a New Yorker, right? Uh, and I, even, like, when I lived in New York, um, I didn't sound like a New Yorker. Obviously, if you've watched my streams for any length of time since before I moved, then you would know. I've kind of always sounded the same. I've always kind of spoke the same. And I think that was something a lot of people, because when I studied broadcasting, you know, I took radio classes, and it was something a lot of people in my classes uh, struggled with, because they had... There were varying levels of uh, accents. 
you know, in a Long Islander, we had a lot of Long Island accents, you know, people like talking very funny. <laughs> so, um, but that was one of the things where, you know, even my teacher said I didn't really have too much of a problem with was I didn't have much of an accent that I didn't have to work to get rid of. It made life very easy. My work. This, uh, this, this demon just keeps moving. You have to be careful with this demon, too, because if you switch rooms at the same time, like, it can just kill you. This one is kind of difficult, too, just kind of based on where you end up having to fight it. And that's pretty RNG. And then... Ah, no! Tater with a thick New York <laughs> accent. See, that was, that was bad RNG. It kind of teleported right in front of me. I, I couldn't react fast enough. I don't know how to talk with a thick New York accent. New York, right? I don't know. I feel like if I try to put on an accent, I just kind of become like a caricature of it. Oh, I almost kind of immediately died to Michael, huh? I don't know, I like my coffee, I like my pizza, my bagels, right? No. You either a Yankees fella or you a Mets fella. Right, I'm a Yankees fella. What else? There's the Giants and the Jets, but the Jets, you know, there's the Jet Stadium's in New Jersey, like... Metsudaisuki! <laughs> Let's go! Home run, home run! Oh, ho, 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 ho. Did you see that? That was messed up! Where am I again? If I can just remember, like, just a simple sequence of where to go. Okay, there's the car. Baseball used to be America's sport. Now it's Japan's. But actually, it's, um, I was reading something because people, you know, they were making jokes about, uh, how... We kind of forced a love of baseball onto Japan during, like, occupation after uh, the war. But Japan has kind of had a love of baseball since... I'm trying to think of uh, when exactly, but it was long, long before the war occupation. Um, I think it was brought over by, uh, I want to say like a teacher or like a, a missionary. Uh, and, you know, he taught the game to people and uh, it was a kind of a bonding experience. Um, for people. Yeah, who couldn't maybe communicate with each other the best because of, like, language barriers. And, uh... It actually kind of helped with occupation and rebuilding. Uh, because... The occupying American forces and, uh, Japanese citizens were able to bond over, like, a mutual love of baseball because it was kind of sort of a national pastime for, for both countries, uh, and it probably wouldn't have gone as well 
Japan didn't already have a love of baseball. That was kind of a cool little fa uh, factoid. It's John Faith, it is. We are faithing our John. But I think, I think, uh, I think definitely during occupation, that love of baseball was probably definitely encouraged, right? <laughs> uh, along with some other more, uh, American or Western cultural practices. <laughs> Let's play ball. Eh? Nande? <laughs> Let's go balling, John. Father John Ward is balling? No way. And now, uh... Japan has exported anime all over the world, and it can bond with the Western world over anime. <laughs> And baseball. My God, what what happened, happened to you? you? Do you think my face is pretty? I have to finish what I started. She's my priest. So you can hear the like priest. Very cool. I think if I stand here. Anime about baseball, cultural singularity. There's several animes about baseball, no? Sports anime is a genre that I find very funny. I mean, I don't know why. There's nothing, like, wrong with it, right? Um... It's just kind of like... Why would I watch an animation about a sport when I can, like, play it or watch the real thing? I guess it's more of the drama, right? And the, the, the sport is like the backdrop of it, but I don't know. Do the antagonists of sports anime just pop the ball or something? No, I think they're like the dudes who uh, are really like rude and cocky. Or like unsportsmanlike, right? Like they're not a... Uh... You know what? Sports anime is just the Karate Kid, right? That, the villain of a of a sports anime is just the kid from Cobra Kai in, in the Karate Kid. I can't remember his name, right? Just, he's just kind of like a jerk. I don't know, like a bully, right? It's up to the protagonist to win at the sport and really put them in their place and change their ways. Because, you know, at the end of the day, They're only lashing out and being a bully because they, they, they need a friend. Ow! Oh! Mort. Mortis. No, I need to start over. But yeah, maybe, uh... I, uh, that, that that's probably me. I was focusing too much on sports anime and not uh not exercising Amy. How thinking of exercise, not exorcism. <laughs> I remember when I was a kid thinking the Prince of Tennis was so goofy. I'm like, why would I want to watch an anime about tennis? I like Yu-Gi-Oh! Made him cut at Mort, which means death in French. Well, Mortis is, uh, is Latin for, for death, so... I mean...
and uh, French is, is a Romance language, so it, it has its origins in Latin. So, I mean, it, it checks out, right? French so lazy, they just got rid of mortis and became- uh, they just cut the is off, right? And became mort- well, yeah, yeah you, I mean, of course you know, you're French. <laughs> I'm gonna exercise you, Amy. That's right, five more reps. <laughs> I want to see you sweat. Remember, pain is just weakness leaving the body. Feel the burn. After this, we're getting some uh, protein. I want to see you eating peanut butter. Organic. None of that additive sugar or salt. Right out of the jar. We don't need the carbs from bread. Remember, go mad. Pain is weakness leaving the body. TF2 so is that a TF2 soldier thing? I, I I don't remember TF2 too much. I've seen that just be a phrase that uh I guess, yeah, I guess you'd say it was like a bodybuilder, like, catchphrase, right? Or, I think I've seen people saying it, like, on Fit. Which, I mean, Fit isn't really, like, the best place to, to learn about fitness. However, Fit is a good place to uh, watch anonymous posters uh, express their repressed homosexuality. <laughs> <laughs> she is here. Gary is just she day minus the moral reprehensibility. Is Gary she day? I think he's just like a literal demon in a human costume, right? He is Astaroth. We know his name, so we have power over him. And now Astaroth is trying to summon a chicken. That is true. I like how uh, at the end of uh, chapter 2 they're like, we need to stop them from summoning Malfoss, right? And then, uh... That kind of gets dropped. And... Then, uh, you know, Gary is just kind of like... Oh yeah, we already summoned Malfoss, like... At the end of chapter 3, and you're like, oh... Well, darn. <laughs> They're like, okay, that kind of stinks. Very bad for the world. It actually makes me wonder, right? Because, yeah. It makes you wonder, what exactly is the unspeakable, right? Because Gary says that his goal was to bring forth the Antichrist, right? And he summoned Malfoss to aid in that. But they're both servants of the Unspeakable. So is it the Unspeakable's will to uh, summon the Antichrist or create the Antichrist? And what goal? What is the, the Unspeakable? I guess, you know, that, that's what makes it scary, but we don't understand. Because they don't, like, explicitly say that, like, it's Satan, right? Or, or the devil. It's unspeakable Lucy. Uh... I don't think Lucy is unspeakable. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh. Wait, hold on, I forgot. Uh, the girl's name isn't Lucy, it's Lisa. I just knew it was an L name. Sorry, I just kind of forgot about Lisa, because uh, Father Garcia is just too cool. But maybe. 
That's like, they don't, like, there's references to Satan in the game. Like, the, the drawings that say, like, thanks, Satan, right? And Satan lives and stuff like that. But there's, a. Uh, they never come out and say that, like, the unspeakable is the devil or Lucifer or Satan or anything. Like, they just say it is the unspeakable. Lisa apologizes versus the Garcia Coalition. Oh no, I messed up the pattern. This is gonna be one of those nights, huh? I have to just, like, focus on that when I get there. Are you going for a no-death run or something? Yes, um... So I'm going for, it's uh, the achievement Good Christian Boy. Uh, you have to play through all three games, uh, get the true ending for each one in marathon mode uh, without dying. And you know, I figured, if I'm gonna be doing this, I should uh, stream it. Uh, one, because I think I would like video proof that I've done it. You know, to really, really prove my nerdiness. But um, also, uh, if I'm gonna be bashing my head against this wall anyway, I might as well have chat with me, right? I have the body of a pig. Uh, I'm praying for your soul. Praying God for your sanity. Thank you. Uh, well, that's why, that's why we're here together, chat, right? We can all be together in our prayers. You can pray for me. I can pray for you, right? Because during the, these times when, when we are playing faith. You know, we will keep the faith. We will be good Christian boys and girls. And, uh, we will, uh, we will confess our sins. We will, uh, we will give praise for the Lord for his his mercy and his love and that he is good. We will protect ourselves from the demonic. Amen. Father, I have sinned. I have not been bawling. Well, remember, you should, uh, you should keep active. Our idle hands are the devil's work. And, uh, you know, uh, keeping yourself busy with hobbies and exercise. Uh, will not only uh, help keep, keep you uh, healthy, both physically and mentally, right? Because, you know, exercise is proven to li lift your mood, right? But, you know, avoiding sloth will also keep the devil at bay. 
and it will strengthen your soul. And, you know, if you have that good connection with your peers in sports, uh, you will build camaraderie, you will build sportsmanlike behavior, and right? you'll become a better person. So, you should continue to ball, right? Because playing basketball, it will, uh, it will improve your life. I have to finish what I started. You know, sometimes we can't always ball. We have other things to attend to in life. We have school, we have work, we have our personal relationships. But it is important to remember that there are times where we also need to focus on ourselves and our hobbies. And, and our bodies, because our body is a temple, a temple of God. You should take care of the temple. You're taking care of the gift that the Lord has given you. I have to finish what I started as me and my group finish a 20 page report that was due on midnight. I should be a basketball player? You should. You should do the things that you enjoy as long as they are positive outlets. I, I went the wrong way. I walked right into her. I got mixed up. I got my ups and downs and my left and rights mixed up so bad. What is vertical? What is horizontal? I don't even know. I enjoy fighting sports. Well, as long as I don't hurt each other too bad. All right. I want to show you guys one of the, the effects that you can have, right? So aberration, I think, is like one of the default ones. But, uh... I like this one, Virtual Lad. You can play the game as Virtual Boy. That's it's pretty great. I like Toilet Colors too because it's a little bit of fecal funny, you know, scatological humor. Uh, Invertus or, or is, is that's just awful. That's it's just bad. My body was a temple. I'm probably the best worst caretaker in the universe. Listen, as long as you're not Shide, right? That is a start. Hurt me more, Jack? Who is Jack? Invert his good Christian boy run when? I would rather do it as a virtual lad run than an Invertus. Uh, Invertus hurts me. I think... Abstaining from uh, vulgarity has also been more difficult than the game right now. I feel like I might be the embodiment of sloth. I think you need vitamin D. Make sure you get plenty of vitamins. Or vitamin B. I think vitamin B is another one. B12 I think is one that is pretty common people to be lacking. Oh. I'm not a doctor. Uh, you should you should talk to your doctor about that thing. I say as I'm also a very sleepy person, but I try to try to make myself do things. That door, why is that door so funky? I got some coffee from time to time at work. I I do like my coffee. I find coffee to be one of the simple pleasures of life. Um, I know like caffeine isn't really great for you, and to use it as sort of like a crutch for energy is not exactly the best thing. Uh, my problem is that kind of happened to me naturally because I just like the taste of coffee. Oh, sorry, coffee, right? My coffee. Uh, it is not a pleasure for me. You shouldn't drink coffee if you don't like it. I, I, maybe you should just drink good coffee. Because I've had a lot of the people I discuss coffee with. They be like, oh, I don't drink coffee because I like it. It's a necessity. I go, well, have you tried having good coffee? 
Because a lot of people will be like drinking like Folgers or Maxwell House, like this this mass produced like sludge, right? And um just, uh, I'm sorry, it doesn't taste good, right? I'm a bit of maybe I'm a bit of a, a, a snob in that regards. I'm like, nah, dude. There's nothing. I mean, it's like. quite as pleasurable or hits the same, like, kind of pleasure. Like, centers in my brain is like. the smell when you. Oh. Damn. I didn't even see. She spawned, like, right on top of me. I didn't see the runes. As when, like, you grind some beans, right, and get those fresh grounds, like that smell of it, or, like, a freshly brewed cup of coffee. It's... It's so nice. And in a perfect world, I would like to maybe have, like, a cafe, right, where I get to have my own blends of different beans and be surrounded by coffee and, like, pastries all day. Right, that'd be really awesome. Uh, however, I know in a perfect, a perfect world does not exist, right? And more likely, if I were to surround my stuff, myself with that stuff and make it my job, I would probably grow to dislike it. And I don't want to dislike that. You know, just have a nice comfy place though, where like, I get to play my records. <laughs> And force other people to listen to my music, and I get to make the coffee I like. I think that'd be very comfy. It's a nice little hole-in-the-wall kind of place. If a perfect world exists, I would be punching holes in people there. That's rather violent, chat member. Uh, do you need to discuss your issues with wrath? Please, chat member, I would like you for you to open up. I hate to, uh... Come on, I, I hate to sound like a, a dork, right? Or, uh... A secondary or whatever but uh something like like cafe leblanc in um persona 5 like comes to mind violence is not a solution it's the solution that is wrong you should turn the other cheek chat member you should love and forgive your enemies for they are they are people just like you going through life, trying to find the solution to their woes. What they don't know is that the solution is the light and love of the Lord Almighty above. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Forgive me, Father, I have sinned. I beat the F out of someone. Excuse me! Chat member, you, you were vulgar. You said the F word? There's better words to use. He beat the S-word out of a League of Legend player? The vulgarity in my chat! I'm... I'm flabbergasted. Back at the tree. What happened to you? We were all being such good Christian boys and girls tonight. And now you're swearing in my chat room? I have to alert your parents. Where the fudge is, uh, is the house? <laughs> Which direction do I go?
Okay, cool, I found it. My second confession is that I genuinely don't mind the DMC reboot story now that it's in Spanish. Honestly, kind of interesting. Full of missed potential, though. Uh, yeah, I think the writing kind of suffers, and it probably doesn't help. I don't know, the voice acting in English wasn't exactly that great. It didn't really stick to me that much. Maybe there's like a degree of like cultural separation that you can get when it's in a different language and you're just reading subtitles. I don't know if that makes sense. But, uh... Yeah, I'm not like a huge fan of the writing of, uh... of the DMC reboot myself. I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with the overall plot, but it's just kind of like the details, you know, in between plot points that kind of bothers me. My dad went away to buy some cigarettes in Guadalupe. Or is it Guadalupe? I don't know. I like the sound of Guadalupe. So, I had a job for a while, uh, working in a textbook center, and uh, part of this job, well actually it was really the main point of the job, right? We handled uh, getting the textbooks for uh, people who went to, usually it was Catholic schools, but it was mostly just, it was really private schools in general, but a lot of the private schools were Catholic schools. Um, and, you know, we'd get the, the textbooks that the state required for the curriculum to the parents, um, because the school didn't provide those books, or a lot of, you know, the schools, rather, because there's multiple schools. And, uh, you know, like, oh. One of the... Uh, I can't remember how it happened. So it was just me and my boss. It's a very small center. And one day, the, the, the name Guadalupe came up. And I don't really remember how or why. But uh, my boss really liked saying Guadalupe. And so he would just kind of say it whenever he got the chance. It'd be like silent. Like you could hear a pin drop and he would just be like, Guadalupe. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. I liked that job. Uh, it didn't really pay well, but it was it was a fun experience. Um, if I could have done that job and gotten like a, a livable wage, I probably would have stayed with it. It was just a, a really kind of positive experience. It's an island. Guadalupe is a French colony island. Was it Guadalupe or Guadalupe? Because the Guadalupe I'm speaking of is a different spelling. It was uh, like a Spanish word. Her name, I guess. Because there was, um... There were quite a few, uh, not Guada... Yeah, okay, but how do you pronounce that? Guadalupe? 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 I kind of want to go to a luau, you know? Like, Hawaiian barbecue? Oh my god. Don't even get me started on- I- oh! oh! Don't even get me started on Hawaiian rolls. Why can't I pause? There we go. I love Hawaiian rolls. Okay. I don't know why this is getting so difficult.
Maybe I should have practiced a little bit more off stream, but I wanted to play Call of Duty today. Yeah, those sobbing emojis, that's kind of how I'm feeling. But yeah, I, I, I adore Hawaiian rolls. I don't know what it is. Maybe eventually I will remember which screens I need to go to to uh, get to the shack. Because I think that's kind of like making me waste time. I can't remember that. This song is very comfy. I can't remember, is it a Beethoven? Did the movement out of a Beethoven symphony or suite? Or um someone else. Some some other composer. I'm really bad with the um the names of I I know it's not right to say classical, because classical is like a specific period of uh, music history. And a lot of the, you know, composers who get attributed to, you know, classical aren't actually, like, they weren't alive during the classical period, or they weren't making music during the classical period. Uh, they might have been born during it, but they didn't really start their careers as music, uh, musicians until long after the classical period ended. But I, that kind of brings me to a conundrum, right? Because if I say classical composer, or I guess maybe classic, right? A classic composer. Like, people know what I mean, right? They'll be like, oh, someone like Beethoven or Mozart or Bach. You know? But, uh... It's like, how do you refer to these composers when that's they weren't part of the classical period? Because I don't like... <laughs> this, is, this is my own problem. I don't like being wrong. And, uh, I don't... I don't want to... To be incorrect with my statement, even if it is... A statement that colloquially people will understand what I mean you know what I'm saying like it's a very silly like hang up in my head but uh it bothers me that because I know that is a a wrong statement on a technicality even if it's understood I don't want to say it but uh you know, when people think classical music, they think a lot of those, like, you know, old, uh... ...sort of compositions from well-known, famous composers of the past. But it's a lot of composers from different time periods kind of getting lumped together, I guess. I don't know. I took a music history class once and I learned these things and now I, I, I want to be correct, but I don't know a whole lot. I, you know, I'm, I'm ignorant to the matter in the sense that I don't know an alternative to say, or I can't remember exactly what time periods everyone was from. Like... I'm trying to think. Was... Johann Sebastian Bach? Was he, uh... Was he a Baroque composer? I don't remember. But I like I like the way Baroque sounds. I don't know, just to say it. Like Baroque period. I don't know. The Fate La Foy. Piano songs with the moon or something adjacent in the title are either really funny or really sad. Uh yeah, it Moonlight Sonata, right? I always get that confused. I don't know why. Right, Moonlight Sonata. With, uh... I think of, um... Uh... Queen of the Night, which is an opera? Or is uh, one of my music Tate, uh... Teachers. I don't know what that is. Classic Tate W. What's the classic Tater W, right? But, um... There was, uh... 
Yeah, I had a, I had a teacher or a professor who insisted, right? He would not be happy if we said opera, right? We had to say opera. <laughs> Which I always thought was pretty funny. Which I guess, you know, again, that, that's correct, right? That's the correct uh, pronunciation. But, uh... Like, I, I don't speak Italian, like, I'm not Italian. So... I've always heard it as opera. And it's like, oh, you're gonna tell me now? After how many years of my life that I, it's opera? Or opera? I don't... That sounds like opera, right? That's a... That's a web browser, right? Like... We're getting to chapter two again. That was the worst way of saying La Foy. Well, I don't know how to say it because I'm not French and I don't speak French. I never studied French. I studied uh, Spanish in high school and middle school. Uh, and I barely retained any of that information because I don't use the language on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis. Chapter dos. Was it say on the uh, on the on the title screen? Or was the Latin? Is it like Captium Deuce or something like that? You are Baroque. I am Chapter A Du hey, It's Du Yeah Un Du Wa is it I remember this was like in high school. This is information that I, I don't uh quatre? Or is it because uh uh someone was uh joking that like counting in French is like un du toi cat <laughs> I will say of the war, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him I will trust. I shall not be afraid of the terror in the night, nor the evil that walk in the One chat best. member comes in with, uh, Because I have made the war my refuge. Uh, that is an because anatomical humor. I have humor. my love upon uh, him, therefore will he deliver me. Listen, chat number, there's nothing funny about anatomy, right? It's just, uh, it's part of the human condition, right? We're all human, we all have human parts, right? Um, some of these, uh, parts of our anatomy are for the purposes of reproduction, you know? Uh, we just need to make sure that we, we only, uh, we only use these, uh, Organs for their intended purposes and not for uh, hedonism or the uh, the pursuit of lustful desire. Because uh, in the end, you know, what does that leave you? And that leaves you. That leaves you commoditizing. In the the value of something something beautiful, right? Remember, chat. The Lord made you all in His image. And, and 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 God, God is a beautiful creature, a, a being of, of love and mercy. 
And if you are made in his image, then you too are a beautiful creature. You're all lovely. Remember that. Amen. Spanish demon, yeah. Uh, considering that this is uh, America in the 1980s, uh, you know, these, uh, you know, Father Garcia and Michael Davies are probably of Mexican descent. Uh, maybe Puerto Rican or similar islands, Cuban, could be from other South American countries, but I'd say just, and this is from my experience in living in the Northeast. I mean, granted, that was in the 1980s, right? But a lot of the people I knew who spoke Spanish, they were of Mexican, Puerto Rican, or Cuban descent. So that's that's where I, I'm coming from with uh, with with where it is, because you know this game takes place in Connecticut. Uh, and actually, John Ward is from New York, believe it or not. That is part of the lore. So, uh, I am just like John Ward, right? Because we're both New Yorkers. He's literally me. <laughs> now, John Ward's much cooler than me, honestly. This dude fights demons. With just the power of his faith. Think about it. He is, he is cooler than Doomguy. Doomguy needs, like, big, like, guns and, like, Violence? John Ward isn't all about that, right? He just has his faith. He's a spiritual warrior. Enacting God's will. To make sure that man is safe from the demonic. Son of man. You must purify the demons and exercise them. By having a balanced breakfast every morning. I prefer the other priests that fight demons with a shotgun. So Father Garcia is also very cool, but he chose the path of violence. Doom guy when he feels the unending warmth and faith of John Ward. I mean, we all know John Ward's true power comes from his faith, right? He can face the demons and all of his troubles with confidence because he knows that the Lord is by his side the whole time to help him with his struggles. Now that's, that's true power. The true power of true faith. I can't remember what got me. Uh, the, the first time I made a chapter two, it feels like it was so long ago, but it really wasn't, right? It was like 30 minutes. It's weird, I somehow am, like, more familiar with Chapter 2 than I am with Chapter 1. That was really, like, baller, actually. <laughs> I didn't have to move. That was actually a little dangerous, but I, I had faith. Me saying I had faith. <laughs> P 
peak fiction. I have to say though, uh... The Otato lore is getting like... Kinda muddled, right? But actually this reminds me of um... Something that I, I need to add to the Otato lore. The problem is, is uh... While uh, I'm being a good Christian boy, I cannot uh, speak of this lore. Um, but it was a comment someone made on my Doom 3 video that I think is really funny. However, the, the humor that would come from discussing this comment uh, is not... It's not family-friendly and does not belong in uh, such a pious stream. So, we will uh, we will save that for another day. Because, again, tonight we're, we're being good. Or at least during this segment, we're being good. As long as I am wearing th these 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 priestly clothes, priestly is that even a word? Priestly? I don't know. Goodliness is a word. That's in the Bible. You could say that. Goodliness. Oh yeah, the spindly woman killed me. Be careful about them spindly women. This is another difficult place to fight her. These teleporting enemies are difficult. Ooh. Actually, it's not really like a bad place to kind of have her end up because it kind of helps speedrunning, right? Darkness. I remember this being so difficult the first time I played, and now I've just, like, I've just got this down pat. I say as I immediately mess it up. Say as I mess it up twice in a row. I've got it down pat. <laughs> Alright. I just need to be humbled for my hubris, right? I just noticed I kind of always go down and then right. Have faith and it will show you the right path. True, true. The right hand path, or the left hand path is the path of darkness. And we just have some, some just blasphemous writings in this note. Disturbingly evil symbology. Look, look how evil it is. Okay, this part should be fairly simple. Pastor, I don't understand why are we demonic in appearance. Um, it is a test of our faith. Right? Uh, it is... It is to show us that sometimes even the strongest can can be tested you know can can have moments of weakness 
And uh, we must not give in to temptation uh, during those moments. And uh, as, as long as uh, we, we, we stay to the right path and, and we, we remember who we are and what it is to, mean, to be good and to follow the path of the Lord, to, to work towards getting back on the right track, we can all be saved. Because God will bestow his mercy upon us. Remember these words. And remember the words of God. You cannot, I recommend you go to your nearest hotel and check in for the night uh, and check the drawer for, uh, their copy of the Bible. It will have plenty of references. Uh, everybody have a very nice handy reference page where it will show you um, all sorts of passages and words of guidance. Really? Many uh, situations that we may encounter in life. He just disappeared from us. Not be tricked by the demon. This one always spooks me because this teleporting in the darkness makes it very, uh, makes it very scary. You have to be on constant alert. Okay, that's the hardest part of the candy tunnel over. But there's still more. There's the hidden sanctum, which has an another kind of scary moment involving the flashlight. We have to be careful with. This place is very unclean. Yeah, these guys, remember, they fear the light. So we have to make sure we keep them at bay. And they're really fast. Just a little scary. So now we can get this key. Okay. We just have to be careful on our way back. Okay. The darkness is gone for the most part. There's going to be some parts up ahead where there's darkness, but... We have safety in numbers. And this is this is where it gets yes, it gets real. Spiritus 
Okay, we have to keep Father Garcia safe here. We're gonna really have to focus on this one, so... I'm gonna be quiet. No! I wasn't in range. I can't get the good ending now, but I can, I guess, at least practice the boss fight. Because at least, you know, if I can finish the rest of this boss encounter without getting hit, then I know it's just a matter of keeping Father Garcia safe. So, it's still good to get the practice in, you know? Oh, and I died. It wasn't wasn't looking in all the right places. Okay. We will give it one more attempt for tonight. I know it gets kind of lengthy and repetitive. I don't want to uh, I don't want to bore everyone, so. And one more attempt. And, uh, you know, I mean, not I wasn't expecting to, you know, actually get the achievement tonight. However, uh, it is uh, kind of nice to see if how far we can get. Because if we can make it to chapter three, right? That's kind of where most of the difficulty is. So it's just a matter of familiarizing myself with chapter one and two to make getting to chapter three the smoothest. And then it's obviously becomes a matter of getting good at chapter three, which I can play each chapter individually as well. It becomes a matter of, you gotta do it all in the marathon anyway. So once I know that I can kind of reliably get to chapter three in marathon mode, then I can maybe try to just practice chapter three. Because again, that's probably the most lengthy and difficult of the three chapters. I definitely want to just practice being able to get through chapters one and two because they're not exactly long. However, having more practice for the uh, the fight with Miriam and making sure I can keep Father Garcia alive might be good just to have like a save file where I can practice that. I think that. Because everything else is fairly um, straightforward, I think, in terms of all the other bosses in Chapter 2. Also, another reason why this is going to be my last attempt is because uh, I'm kind of hungry and I just want to grab like a quick bite to eat. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. Go downstairs first. Get ahead of myself. I'm trying to decide what I want though. I have something quick. So, uh. Not entirely. 
or what I have. Well, I know what I have that's quick. It's a matter of what I want out of what I have. I kind of go for a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Another simple pleasure of life. Oh my god, this this spam bot is posting lewd and lustful messages. This is a family friendly Christian stream chatbot. The emojis disappear when you uh When you go to, like, go to the message options. <laughs> My goodness. I'm blushing. Oh my god. Wait, what the heck? I get you. I, I, I deleted those messages, but it doesn't say... It says that it says the moderator deleted them. Oh wait, hold on. She's not in this room anymore. Be gone, demon of the chat room. It's, we must exercise this filth out of the chat room. I speak unto the filth. Trying to have a wholesome conversation about peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Which, uh. I'm always amused when I talk to people, uh, in, you know, like internationally. People who uh, come from other countries. Because, uh. They get very, um. Uh. Well, actually, I'm not gonna say they get a certain way. Uh, there's like a varying reaction to like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Uh, I never really thought about how it's kind of like a distinctly American thing to eat. Because, you know, growing up, like I ate peanut butter and jelly sandwich all the time. So I was like, it's just like a normal, like kind of basic thing to eat. And then you talk about it when someone from another country is around and they're like, like, how can you eat that? Those flavors don't go together, right? I'm like, what do you mean? Peanut butter and jelly goes together like... Peanut butter and jelly. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> oh, I got, uh, I got a little too... I got a little too confident there. See, now part of me is like, you can get farther than that, but also I have to stick to my word, right? I, I should. Ah, that sounds, that seems like such like a bad way to end it, but if that's how it's going to be, then I probably shouldn't attempt more because I'm just going to play not as well, I, I, I think. The message we should take from that. Anyway, that's not going to be the end of the stream. Do not worry, chat, for I will be back after a short BRB, right? We have to get out of faith mode. We will be back. I will probably switch over to, uh, I think I'm going to play some World of Horror because I like that game a lot. And we'll keep with like the retro horror type, you know theme uh so yeah i'll put on some music and when we get back we'll uh we'll enjoy that game so we are